the title fight, the talk of the sporting world, depending on your definition of sport. We Thunderheads prefer the action in this venerable ring. Winchester Speedway, where our champion Brian Tyler continues his title defense tonight. Earlier this season, Michigan's Tyler was knocked out twice in a single round of USAC sprint car action at Winchester. But he vowed to return to this famous high bank circle of asphalt. Hey, who knows what this guy was thinking, but Winchester contender Chet Phillips' eyes are on a second 97 victory here. Another of this year's winners, Andy Mishner, gives way tonight to supermodified star Pat Abel. And never count out the 94 USAC sprint car champ Doug Kalitta when the heavyweights of the Thunder and Lightning Division pull on the gloves and enter the most ferocious ring in all of racing. Sound the bell, start the fight, beware the knockout punch. The quiet community of Winchester, Indiana is the proud sponsor of a little civic activity just outside of town tonight at a place that is anything but quiet. Winchester Speedway will give you the big eyes. And tonight you're going to be riding around it with this guy, Brian Gerster. We welcome all of the Thunderheads here to this wonderful old racetrack, nearly as old as the Brickyard, home tonight for the USAC Stoops Freightliner Sprint Series as the Thunderheads gather, and we welcome all of you, and we offer you an early happy birthday, America. I'm Dave Despain, here to host the activities for this evening as ESPN kicks off a big racing weekend. We got the Pikes Peak Hill Climb, we got all the fun from Daytona International Speedway, but first, we have wildness here at Winchester. Nothing nuttier than Spring cars on this bullet fast half mile been a wild day already we had tornadoes on this side of town a train wreck on the other side of town that knocked out power here for a couple of hours they got the electricity back just in time to fire up the clocks and that just in time for Doug Kalitta to jump back in his sprint car which he has been driving for a while by the way and go out and turn the fastest lap of the night he's our quick qualifier and we'll kick off the program that includes three qualifying heat races of eight laps each that'll bump four guys straight to the main the winners of the heats will run along with one of the four fastest qualifiers in a dash for cash we'll do the 10 lap semi to complete the field for the 30 lap feature that will be our main event here this evening now it's a good thing they got the power back on because that means we have air conditioning in the booth high atop winchester speedway where tonight ladies and gentlemen you will have the pleasure of hearing the voices of our thunder anchor bob jenkins and the three-time usac champion larry rice and they will speak speak now. Boy, I'm glad that air conditioning's on, aren't you, Larry? <laughs> sure is nice up here. That's Another right. thing I want to know is, in view of that onboard camera we have at Brian Gerster, when do you blink when you go around here, or do you? Hey, there's two things you don't do at Winchester. You don't blink, and you don't breathe. If you do either one, you're in big trouble. <laughs> well, good evening, everyone. We're set for some Stoops Freightliner Sprint Car action here on the half mile at Winchester. The first heat is just about to go. Let's give you the starting lineup. The pole sitter is going to be Tim Cox in number 40. Outside will be Joey Kerr in car number 44. Second row, Gus Wasson in number 23. Brad Armstrong in 99. The third row will consist of Chet Phillip in the yellow number 77 and the 22 of Doug Kalitta. And supposedly starting back in the fourth row is the 7A of Steve Anderson. I don't believe he's out there, though, is he? Yes, he is. He's is in he? that uh, car, that uh, maroon color car back there in the back of the pack. They're, they're pretty well lined up right now, but look at that third row. Doug Kalitta, who has not run since the first three races of the year, but he's always very, very quick here. And he lines up right alongside of uh, the 77 car. Oh, I guess you're right. There is. Well, car. Gus Wasson is the guy that's not out there. His car is still sitting down here in the pit area, and it shows no sign of him getting in it. And in fact, they've got the rear tires off of it. So obviously, he has a mechanical problem, and Gus Wasson won't be going here in the first heat. So we got six cars out there. Well, uh, that's too bad because it get, does give uh, Chet Phillips up a bit of an advantage being in the a row ahead of Coletta, but that was going to be a formidable battle. Those two guys trying to uh, get through traffic, get to the front, because uh, they're both very, very tough on this kind of racetrack. So watch the yellow 77 and the black 22 right behind him. They're the guys that were fastest in qualifying, and so you would naturally think that they might go up front and battle for the lead. But we shall see here. 
As uh, eight laps of racing just about to go, the drivers are being given the one lap to go signal. Well, of course, Tim Cox starting there on the front row. He's uh, He's been running USAC now for a couple of years. Joey Curran has not run all that much. Uh, he took over the uh, that car uh, just this year. And there's a car of uh, Gus Watson. That car, of course, is owned by Chris Hollis, who is uh, Hoyles, I mean, who is the uh, catcher for the Baltimore Orioles. And that's, that, uh, yep. you know, beautiful race car, but obviously they don't seem to be working on it too hard, so that's no. not good news. Apparently it's finished for the evening. All right, six cars getting set to go here at Winchester in the first. Oh, got Felina <laughs> with a little love tap there on uh, Chad Phillip before the green flag comes out and the green flag waves. We are underway, and Joey Kerr quickly jumps to the advantage, but look at Chet Phillip on the bottom side of the racetrack. He's in second place already, and look at Kalina. He comes up to take second as Phillip goes to the lead. Those two guys are really, really fast. Now it's going to be interesting to see. You know, Kalina has not run now for, uh, oh, I'd say a month or so because of the business he has. Of course, he flies an airplane for his uncle, Connie Kalina. He, uh, so he's been, oh, look at this. Again, he went right up. Looked like he was going to give him a little boot in the rear end. And this is not the kind of a place you want to make contact, believe me. Good battle for third also as Tim Koch was able to get around Joey Kerr for third. And now Coletta looks inside once again at the end of the backstretch. Dogging Phillips, trying to get around him for the lead of the heat race, but can't do it. Chet Phillips remains in front. You know, right now, Philip is as quick entering the corner and exiting the corner, but right in the very center of the corner, Coletta is faster. Right, see, they stay about the same right here. Gains on him, gains two car lengths on him, almost right in the center, but coming off, he really gets a, a gunshot, and Coletta just can't do anything with him. Lapping the slow car of Steve Anderson, so he's a lap down all the Coletta out of control at the end of the, at the uh, beginning of the back stretch, but saves it. He does lose several car lengths, but look how quickly he closes in once again. And you don't know how difficult it is to save a car that's running sideways down the back stretch of this place, believe me. Nor do I want to know. Still about two car lengths behind, closes in once again in the middle of the corner, takes a look inside, no room there yet. Well, see what he's trying to do, he's trying to get in and pinch the car down under him, coming off of the corner. He didn't do it that time, but the last time he tried to pinch it down, when he does, the back end gets loose, and that's what's causing that back end to wiggle around back there. Here comes a white flag, we got one more lap to go, and I don't think Kalita can do it. Chet Phillip is holding off his advances. And let's see if he can do it on this final lap here. Kalina to the inside off the second corner. Nothing going on, though. He closes in once again, but Chet Phillip is going to win the first heat. If Chet Phillip had run just a little higher or a little lower, he would have given Kalita a place to go. But he was running right smack in the middle of the racetrack. Kalita could not get under him. He couldn't pinch the car down under him. He could couldn't, uh, wasn't working well enough, really, to go around the top of him like we've seen some guys do in the past. So he had to just follow him. But uh, come feature time, it might be a different story. Absolutely. Brad Armstrong finished third in that race. Tim Cox was fourth. Joey Kerr finished in fifth position. And Anderson was sixth. So the first four finishers in the heat races will transfer to the feature race tonight without going through the semi. Of course, uh, that car, Corey Phillips, is a uh, quite a different kind of a car that Chad drives. He drives it for his brother, Corey, and a uh, specially built pavement car, as is the one that Doug Coletta runs, and both of those cars proved to be uh, very, very fast in that heat race. Former competitor at the Indianapolis 500, a former resident of Ozona, Texas, but he makes his home in Indianapolis now. Chet Phillip is in victory lane for the first heat race. We'll take a break, be back, and talk with him in just a moment. Thunder from ESPN2 and Winchester being brought to you by American Express. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, American Express helps you do more. And by Daytona USA, the ultimate motorsports attraction. Let's take a look at the results of the first heat race just completed here at Winchester. The winner was Chet Phillip. Doug Coletta finished second. Third was Brad Armstrong. Tim Cox was fourth. Joey Kerr fifth. And Steve Anderson finished in sixth position. Dave, what's Chet have to say? Well, Chet and I were visiting earlier today, waiting for the tornadoes to blow by and get the race started. And being polite, the last thing I said was, well, see you in victory lane. And uh, you made a profit out of me. Congratulations. That was a nice run. Well, thanks. Yeah, the STL car is working real good. It's, like always, it's sticking right on the bottom. And motor's running good, and the car's handling good. So 
It's up to me. You wasted no time, obviously. Knew what you had to do. Knew Kalita was the guy to beat. Let's go ahead and roll that videotape. We got the first lap here. I want you to take a look at this. Uh, you obviously made your move in a hurry here. Well, yeah, I, uh, I'm watching the video here too, but yeah, I knew I didn't have much time because Doug would be right on me and uh, and uh, I knew they'd, somebody would probably drift up, so I shot under one and then and uh, just got under uh, Cox there and then the, got under uh, the, uh, the other car, Joey, going into, the, into three there. What about now when he catches you, because he came right with you, he saw you going and said, well, I'm just going to hook onto that, uh, that yellow car. Did you know he was back there that whole time? Could you hear him? I knew he was out there about lap two. I knew he'd be there. Because you, you, when you see those flash bulbs flashing, you know that somebody's right behind you. <laughs> you can't really hear them, but I, I can see the bulbs flashing. See him get real sideways there. That was a heck of a save. It's too bad you missed that. I'm glad you got to see it on video, too. I don't like to see those. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I just want to thank Dick, Dick Fuller for uh, over in Ohio for helping us out. He's been a great help with the uh, standard testing labs. And, and, of course, my brother with the shock absorbers there in, here in Indianapolis. You won the last race uh, here, uh, well, with an earlier race here, and you won at Phoenix, back-to-back -back pavement races in the sprint cars. I'm wondering what this car needs tonight to make sure that you can keep him and the rest of these guys behind you. What changes do you make between now and the feature? Well, we just got to get the perfect balance coming off the corners. Uh, the car had its tendency to push the right front off here, so I have to free the car up and, and get it where it'll drive off without burning the right front off. Okay, man, you go work on the car, and we'll see you again in victory lane later, maybe. Huh? Thanks. Okay, that's Chad Phillip. He has won it. Well, we know that the boys in the booth are comfortably cool, and we know after their description of the first heat race that they are loquacious. Let's see just how good-looking they are as we go topside for a little further analysis. What's loquacious? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's always fun to come to Winchester. As we discussed last year, this place is only about uh, 35 miles from where I grew up, and I've been coming here for a long time. The track has been around for decades, even when it was as rough as a cob, and now it's as smooth as glass. Always good racing here. It's always great racing, and this place used to be known as the Road to Indy. If you came here and ran well, it was almost a sure ticket to get to Indianapolis. Not sure it's quite that easy today, but it's still a great place to come and race. But we do have have some saluting to do here tonight to uh, former Thunderheads and current Thunderheads because some of them are doing very well in higher forms of racing. I'm talking about guys like Tony Stewart, Jimmy Kite, uh, Kenny Irwin, and Billy Boat and others. Oh, that's right. Of course, Kite and uh, Boat, relative newcomers to the IRL. Jimmy Kite has signed a five-year contract after his debut last week, though. He did a very good job. Billy Boat is going to run for Foyt, and of course, Stewart won his very first race. But you've got Kenny Irwin, who is in discussions for a Winston Cup ride after a couple wins in the truck series already. Mike Bliss has done great, Stevie Reeves. So we've got a lot of guys who've moved from this series and have done very well, so I think they've done all open wheel racers proud. And we understand that Andy Mishner may be in line for a Bush Grand National ride also. Well, tonight we focus on the sprint car drivers of the current generation. Here are the point standings. Kevin Thomas is at the top of the list. The defending champion Brian Tyler is 49 back. Then Mark Casella, who is out of action because of a crash last weekend. Derek Davidson and Dave Steele are fourth and fifth. Yes, and a lot of these guys are doing this, are running this series, especially Kevin Thomas, Derek Davidson, uh, David Steele, specifically because the winner of the championship this year gets a uh, test with Treadway on an IRL car, the car that Ari Leindag drove. So they're all really wanting to win the championship just, just for that reason. And if you win the championship, you're going to have to do well on pavement, and especially here because seven events are being held here out of the uh, 32 races that are on this schedule. And besides that, they also run the pavement at Indianapolis. Indianapolis Raceway Park. Right, so it's the payment is a very, very important part of it. The dirt is also important, but boy, if you want to win, you've got to be able to run on both and do well here at Winchester especially. And here are the pavement winners so far in 1997. Andy Mishner won the first race here. Phillip won two in a row at Phoenix and then here at Winchester. Dave Steele has won twice on the pavement, both at IRP. Uh, at Anderson Speedway on the quarter high bank track there, Donnie Adams was the winner and Brian Tyler won here at Winchester. That, by the way, his first win in the series. He won the title last year without winning a single event. Now let's take a look at the top qualifiers for tonight. Dave already told you that Doug Kalitta was the fast qualifier. Brian Tyler is second. Yes, uh, Brian Gerster third, Chet Phillip, Dave Steele, and John Heidenreich is taking Mark Casella's place in the 96 car and has done a very good job qualifying in sixth position here tonight. So the second heat race is lining up right now. We'll be back for it. Chet Phillip wins heat number one here at Winchester Speedway in Indiana. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more Thunder. 
Welcome back to Winchester, Indiana Speedway, where the USAC Stoops Freightliner Sprint Cars are set to go for heat race number two. Before we go any further, we forgot to mention one former Thunderhead. What was his name again? Uh, we just forgot it. I mean, so uh, so obscure. Jeff Gordon. Oh, you know, nobody's yeah. ever heard of that guy. Yeah. Of course, he hasn't done too badly in the Winston Not Cup cars. Not too shaggy. Here's the uh, lineup for heat race number two. Mike Blake is on the pole in the orange car number 81. Billy Pewterbaugh Jr. on the outside in car 16. Second row, Kevin Thomas in number three, and Pat Abold in 69. The third row, Dave Steele, car number two, and Brian Tyler in number 4C. And Brian has an onboard camera for us tonight. In a couple of laps, we'll get the green flag and get racing again. Well, of course, this, this is a pretty uh, hot and heavy field as well. Brian Tyler, of course, the champion from last year, starting back in the uh, sixth position. He's going to be very, very tough. We're going to ride along with him. He should give us a good... Uh, view from that right front corner. You look down the straightaway and you'll get a chance to see exactly how close and tight things can get from back there in the back. And looking ahead, that's the Hoffman car that's being driven tonight by Pat Abold. Andy Mishner, the regular driver of this car, but as we mentioned, he's in pursuit of a Bush Grand National ride, and so this car has been taken over by Pat Abold, who drives the Hoffman Silver Crown car. Right. He was a natural uh, replacement because he does do such a good job in their uh, Silver Crown car. I think the thought was he couldn't run off the pavement races so uh he, you know on the sprint car series so he wasn't going to do that but obviously he's made the decision to come back and run those dave Steele in the black number two on the inside of the back row and of course kevin thomas in the white number three inside of row two i mean all of those guys very very capable might point out billy pewterball outside front row as the only six cylinder car that's still running in usac well, they, everybody's kind of gone away from those six cylinders but pewterball in the 16 car does have a six cylinder engine all right mike blakes begins to step on the gas and pull ahead of the rest of the field as they come down the straightaway and get the green flag we are underway once again dave Steele to the bottom and so is pat abel here's the onboard camera with Brian Tyler. Boy, look how quick things happen up there in front of you. Oh! Man, I guess quick. You can see he, I think he was sucking it up as much as we were when he almost ran into it. That almost gave me a heart attack. Man, oh man. Well, Blake continues to hang on to the lead here as Kevin Thomas challenges him in car number three. Dave Steele there is in the black car trying to move alongside of Thomas. Right. You can see that uh, Steele trying to find a way around. Meanwhile, Abel right behind him trying to get up there. Now he's alongside Thomas. He's got a chance to get down there. But uh, Blake running right in the middle of the racetrack. Now Thomas is running on the outside. Man, oh man, the racetrack is really full of race cars. And Abel, as you saw, got around uh, Tyler and... Steele. Steele is the leader at the moment as he's taken off and put quite a bit of racetrack between him and second place, Kevin Thomas, right now. Right, you can see now that uh, Mike Blake has fallen back, just about to get passed by Abel, back to fifth spot now. And here comes Billy Pewterball. He's also going to get around Blake because obviously he's slowed up quite a bit for the first couple of laps. So Blake from the lead back to fifth position, and he's battling to hold on to that as Dave Steele, the young Tampa, Florida driver, has the lead. The best battle is for second position. Tyler goes high on the racetrack trying to get around Kevin Thomas. You can see that he's, gonna, he's trying to find a way around him on the top side. That used to be really the fastest way when they repaved this racetrack it really took that real real high groove away just a little bit it's not as easy to get up there and blow by guys now as it used to be and there again he right behind him gonna try to move out if he gets up to the side of him he's got a chance but thomas is just too quick around the bottom of the racetrack white flag is waving we're on the final lap of the race dave Steele, a comfortable lead lead right now and tyler's still trying that high line as they go down the back stretch now he's right on his tail as they head for the third corner tyler takes the second position as they come off the corner, Tyler finishes second. Thomas is third. Well, he did a nice job setting him up. He just went in under low, slid right up in front of him. And, you know, Thomas had to give him plenty of room because uh, too dangerous to be rubbing wheels at this place. Pat Abel finished in fourth position, Blake fifth, and Pewterbaugh finished in sixth spot. So Dave Steele comes home the winner of heat race number two here tonight in the car owned by Johnny Vance. And I was talking to Dave Steele a little bit earlier tonight, and he's one of those guys who doesn't particularly care for the dirt. He would be just as happy if all the uh, Stoops Freightliner sprint car races were held on the pavement because that's where he got his experience down in Florida, and that's where he still excels. But nevertheless, he's uh, up in the points despite the fact that he doesn't like the dirt. He wins heat race number two here tonight.
So, two races are complete. We got one more heat race coming up, then a dash for cash. The 30-lap feature will top things off tonight here at Winchester Indiana Speedway. Second heat race has concluded here at Winchester. Dave Steele is the winner. Brian Tyler finishes second. Kevin Thomas and Pat Abold also transfer to the feature. Mike Blake and Billy Pewterball will be back for the uh, semi-feature event. Here's Dave to Spain with Dave Steele. And we were just contemplating our monitor here, which went to a pretty blue picture, just as we were hoping to show the pass for the lead. Before we get to that, let me congratulate you. That was a nice run once you got through the traffic jam. It was a little crowded there at the start, wasn't it? Yeah, and it always is here's a, here at Winchester. It's uh, it's one thing to run quick here by yourself, but you also got to learn to pass here. And Johnny Vance going to be a good race car. Bobby has it set up pretty good. And uh, Hopefully we can get a little bit better for the feature. Well, you mentioned the pass. That's our cue, I think, to roll that tape. We have that monitor uh, working now. So let's let Dave take a look at it and tell us how you managed to get around Blake here. Well, uh, uh, our car is working real good on the bottom. I mean, it seems like I can run a lot lower than, than, than quite a few other guys. And, and it's stuck down there, and we just made it work. Is that something you set up for intentionally? Do you come here with the idea that you want to make it stick down low like that? Well, um, actually, I think the fastest groove here is down low, but you know you, can, you run into the problem passing guys down there because they're already there. So I think running by yourself down low is a place to be, but you need to learn how to get your car set up to pass up high if you have to. We were talking during the uh, the heat race, the guys in the booth, about your pavement experience, but uh, you kind of got Terre Haute pretty well figured out last weekend, didn't you? You qualified really well. Well, I wouldn't say that. I mean, we qualified a uh, quick time, but, you know, we... It seems like the tracks get slick and we struggle real bad when that happens. So, uh, you know, uh, Jeff Walker gives me a good car to run on the dirt, and hopefully we, we can get our uh, act together. Okay, we're going to let you go get this baby ready, and we're going to take a look at those uh, highlights from the Terre Haute dirt track action. It was the Hallman Classic, and Bob Jenkins is going to tell you everything you need to know about it. Dave Darlin sat on the pole for the 27th Annual Classic, flanked by Rusty McClure. Darlin led the first 11 laps. The man on the move, though, was SCRA regular J.J. Yaley, who quickly moved up from his 10th place starting spot and on lap 12 passed Darlin for the lead. The race was slowed on lap 17 when Mark Casella and Derek Davidson got together on the front stretch, resulting in Davidson getting upside down. Last lap, Jack Hewitt tried to get by the young Yaley, but J.J. held his ground and after the two touched in turn one, Hewitt somehow kept control and hung on to second place. This is as close as Jack could get at the finish as Jaylee recorded his first career USAC Stoops Freightliner sprint car win. And Larry, just after the checkered flag dropped on this race, Mark Casella, who you see here, was uh, badly injured in a flip that began on the front straightaway. It uh, took him out of the ballpark down in turn number one. His car didn't stop flipping until it nearly went out of bounds into the parking lot. It ended up against a tree. The roll cage collapsed on the car. And uh, as you'll see here in a few minutes, the, car, the roll cage went about eight inches down into the ground, and Mark has sustained a head injury. Yeah, and I think he made some contact with that tree up there, and that's probably what did a lot of the damage. So our hopes and our prayers are for a, f a fast recovery for uh, Mark Casella. Let's get back down to Dave, and maybe he can update us on his condition. Well, we can. Paul Wilson is one of our unsung heroes on the Thunder Crew here because he helps us down uh, trackside with all the shows. But he's also a good friend of Mark Casella, and you got to visit him in the hospital. How's things going for him? Yeah, you know, uh, considering the severity of the accident, Mark's doing really well. He's uh, coming around, and he's doing a lot better. And, um, you know, he's a tough, strong guy, and I think that uh, he'll be bouncing back and be on track before too long. He was, what, unconscious for, I guess, a day or two and then started kind of coming around? Yeah, he was unconscious, actually, from Friday till Sunday morning, but he came come around on Sunday, and yesterday he was... Uh, come around and was talking and then he was eating and he's coming around really good he, we had him up walking he's he's coming around when you go see him again you tell him we all said hi and we want to see him back here real quick okay you bet Dave. all right thanks paul we're going to take a quick commercial break in quebec we got heat race number three on tap did i mention that dave Steele can pick up an extra two grand from wins for winning that heat race we'll be right back The town of Winchester, Indiana is presenting tonight's uh, race here at Winchester Speedway. 5,100 people live in Winchester, 27,142 in Randolph County. This is the Soldiers and Sailors Monument in downtown Winchester. It is the second largest in the state, second only to the Monument Circle in downtown Indianapolis.
Okay, we got some racing for you here at the track with the third heat race set to go. Here's the lineup. On the front row will be Gene Lee Gibson in car number zero, the yellow car. J.J. Yaley in the blue number four is uh, lining up outside row number one. Second row, Derek Davidson in car 17 and Jason McCord in 95. And the third row is Johnny Heidenreich in car number 96 and Brian Gerster in 19. Brian Gerster has an onboard camera. Yeah, it'll be interesting to ride along with Brian Gerster again, starting in the back of the pack. He's going to have to work his way through. You can see right now he's kind of assessing the guys around him, trying to figure out exactly what he wants to do. The starts are very, very important, and you do have to kind of take a guess as to what's going to happen in front of him. He's blinking his eyes, making sure that he has enough moisture for eight <laughs> laps. <laughs> well, he'll be all right. And there's Heidenreich in uh, Johnny Toast's car, the car that... Uh, that Payment car that Mark Casella drove. It's not the same car, obviously, but it's the team car to that that they run on the pavement. And I think this is one of John's first times. He's a big time midget driver. Of course, Gerster was too until just uh, last year. He ran most of the midgets up to that point. So, uh, you know, a lot of midget drivers, a lot of dirt drivers in this uh, race right here. Here we go. They come down off the fourth corner and the pole sitter, Gene Lee Gibson, oh, lagging man. behind. J.J. Yaley forgot this was not dirty. Tossed that thing into turn one. Got her sideways. Well, I didn't think they would keep it, but they do as uh, Yaley jumps out into the lead for a while. But now as they come off the corner, it is the 95 car of Jason McCord up front. McCord got around him. Of course, J.J. Yaley has almost always been a, a paper of dirt driver. This is only his third race. And you can see Derek Davidson, that 17 car. He has not run a whole lot of pavement either. So those guys uh, struggling just a little bit. But Yaley really doing a nice job up there. That is a dirt car, basically, that he's running. It's not a special. Oh, oh this. look out. My goodness, how did he save that? Unbelievable. Heidenreich tried to pinch the car down underneath Gene Lee Gibson. He got that thing sideways. He had her pointed at both walls and still kept it going straight. Third, fourth. Oh, there he goes again. Sixth, they're running right together and still Heidenreich is out of control. Hey, I can see why those two guys behind him aren't trying to pass him. They don't know where he's going to be. Unbelievable. This is Brian Gerster. We're watching from his onboard camera and what action we are seeing. Gerster goes to the inside and gets the position and he's still sideways in the second corner. Heidenreich is. Yeah, he's so far sideways he's just got to be making everybody behind him a little bit nervous. Now that now that uh, Gerster's gotten around him, he's going to feel a little bit better about trying to get around. Look at Gibson, though. He's doing pretty much the same thing. It's Gibson, Gerster, Heidenreich, and Davidson. Now Gerster shoots to the inside down the back stretch and takes over third position. Now he sets his sights on Yaley, who continues to run second. McCord is way out in front. Now Heidenreich finally gets around uh, Todd, your Gene Lee Gibson, down on the inside. And Davidson trying to do the same thing. He just can't, hasn't found a way. Davidson is, uh, you know, like I said, he's new to the pavement. He hasn't really figured out the passing part. He's pretty fast, but he just, he's a little tentative on the passing. And uh, to tell you the truth, I don't blame him a whole lot. Jason McCord wins the race by about a half a lap. Boy, he really blew everybody away in that one. Here comes second place. Gerster gets second. Yaley third. Fourth is Heidenreich. And fifth would be Derek Davidson as he makes a pass on Gene Lee Gibson right at the finish line. So Jason McCord, he was bye-bye. Boy, he was really, really quick. He got he got through the traffic very, very early. Everybody else kind of got hung up back there, uh, especially Gerster. And uh, Yaley did a very, very nice job running in third position because uh, he, got a, he got a good start and he kept the race car straight after that little instant up there in turn one. But everything else, he did a nice job. Gerster was able to get around Yaley, however, for second position in the late laps. And there is the Jason McCord car rolling into the pit area and headed for victory lane after winning our third heat race of the evening. Dave Steele won the second heat race, and the first heat race of the evening was won by Chet Phillip. Let's take a look at the top five finishers in that event. Winner was McCord, Gerster second, Yaley third, Heidenreich finished fourth, and Derek Davidson fifth, and he will have to run in the semi-feature. We'll be back to talk with Jason McCord in just a moment at Winchester. Very impressive performance by Jason McCord as he wins heat race number three over Brian Gerster, J.J. Yaley, Johnny Heidenreich, Derek Davidson, and Gene Lee Gibson. Victory Lane, Dave Despain. 
McCord has done everything but win a feature at this racetrack. I mean, he's fast timed the joint. He's won heat races. And the wildest memory you have of this place, tell me about the wildest finish you ever had here. Uh, definitely, David. Be 1995, the last race of the year. Uh, Doug Coletta and I and Kenny Irwin were racing, coming off uh, turn four, the last lap. And uh, uh, Doug and I got together, and I flipped from turn four to turn one. Actually went across the start finish line third, you know, which third's like uh, where we, I guess, we're supposed to finish here. We finished third here so many times, unbelievable. But, you know, we'd sure like to win one here. It'd mean a lot. I grew up here as a kid, you know, and this is, it's always been a special place to me. So it'd be nice to win one. Here. Well, let's focus on this heat race and take a look at the pass for the lead. J.J. Yaley's got that dirt car out here. He was doing a little dirt track style driving in that thing, wasn't he? Yeah, we took the green get into one and J.J. kind of got crossed up. And uh, when he did, he kept the car on the bottom and let me get some momentum. And uh, I just kind of drove by him on the bottom getting into three. And, you know, J.J.'s still new on the pavement. You know, he's, he's doing a good job. He's a great racer. And you talk about momentum. I mean, you didn't win this thing. You just killed him. That car's good tonight, isn't it? Yeah, actually, we were real good in, uh, in hot laps and uh, uh, we didn't qualify as good as we'd like to, you know, and uh, we're going to have to start back a little bit, but if the car's real racy like that, I think, you know, we can pick our way up through the field and uh, hopefully get up to the front of the deal. It'd be awful nice. All right, keep the rubber side down, and I want to see you win one of these things, okay? Okay, we'll definitely do, Dave. I'd like to thank uh, Stoops Rateliner and everybody for uh, putting this series on, and my sponsors, Payless Supermarkets, Roundies, Duff Ramey American, Widener Chevrolet. Got him in there, and he's ready to go win the main <laughs> event. We're going back to outside. Congratulations, Jason McCord. Well, Jason's going to climb in the car in just a few moments because the next item on the agenda is the dash for cash, the three heat race winners plus the fastest qualifier. What in the world is that thing on the racetrack? Well, it's a brand new type of race car, and if a former driver has his way, there'll be another rear engine series in the near future for all kinds of drivers at an affordable price. Since the late 1960s, it's been difficult in some cases for drivers to find their way to the Indianapolis 500. These drivers are on the constant lookout for the car that's going to take them to the next level. That's where sprint car driver turned race car fabricator Mark Alderson steps in. He had a vision of a car that would give drivers a chance to gain experience in indie style cars at a substantially lower cost. The uh, cost of the car, uh, is we feel very certain that we can uh, produce the cars for under 50,000. Uh, and uh, the construction of the car is the latest uh, technology like at uh, uh, IRL and that. But the construction technique is similar to Winston Cup in the materials and things. So we're able to keep a lot of the high technology with low technology materials and cost. Alderson, a veteran of sprint car competition himself, sees this as an opportunity for not only sprint and midget drivers, but also those wanting to gain experience in indie style racing. These cars are technically interesting, and uh, I think they will provide a new outlet and an avenue. So I would expect some sprint car drivers to uh, come to this series. I would also expect some of the SCCA drivers who have an interest in experience in the, uh, these cars to come to this series. I would expect some people that uh, did not make it to Indy to come back to, gain, uh, to just get experience and find out how good they could have been. And then we'll have a lot of guys that uh, are coming up. I think we're going to get new people coming into this area that are intrigued by the technology that normally maybe would never have run sprint cars or engines. Alderson's car is a tube frame chassis with a stock Oldsmobile Aurora engine that will turn out close to 300 horsepower. He hopes to kick the series off in 1998 with a 10 race schedule and a winner's purse in the four to $5,000 range. And from something brand new, let me take you back a few years. The old timers are coming to Winchester on the 12th of July, and you're going to see babies like this. This is a 1930s era Riley Sprint car. Bob McConnell is the owner of this car. It came out of Virginia. Bob, uh, tell me about the big weekend that's coming up here on the 12th. I know it's an annual celebration, but this one's special. It sure is. After 25 years, and many of the old cars, such as this, will be back, and the drivers. It's a special occasion here at Winchester. We're going to get the opportunity to fire this baby up, take it around the track, maybe? Not this time. Uh, just on the trailer right now for show, and we appreciate this uh, uh, spot for us. What a great-looking car this is. Where'd you get it? 
This is one that I bought many, many years ago and finally restored it. Actually, the first car of a number of them I have in my collection, trying to restore and preserve this uh, uh, era and uh, the history involved with it. You got to be real proud of it. I hope you have a terrific weekend on the 12th. Fine, Dave. I sure appreciate that. Thank Everybody you. come to Winchester on the 12th of July. It's the 25th anniversary celebration of the old timers gathering here at famed Winchester, Indiana. And I expect you to be here. We'll take a commercial break and come right back. Well, it's July 4th weekend. That means that the Pepsi 400 is coming up from Daytona International Speedway. Qualifying is here on the deuce tomorrow at 3 o'clock in the afternoon Eastern Time. And then on Saturday, yes, that's Saturday, and it's at 11 o'clock Eastern Time in the morning. You can have breakfast at Daytona as ESPN presents live coverage of the Pepsi 400 NASCAR Winston Cup race from Daytona International Speedway as we mark the halfway point of the Winston Cup season. By the way, we mentioned Jeff a little bit earlier, but uh, everybody here at the Speedway wanted to say hi and welcome the Performance PR Plus DuPont Motorsports team, including Jeff Gordon and Ray Evernham and everybody else who are watching us tonight in Daytona Beach. And also Kim O'Brien is with that team. She's the daughter of Linda Holdeman. Hi, everybody. We'll uh, see you on uh, Friday and Saturday at the uh, Pepsi 400. Well, we're getting set up for the dash for cash, but right now Eldora Speedway is a track that we will visit later this year on Thunder. The USAC Stoops Freightliner Sprint Cars were there recently. Let's take a look at the highlights. The rare Sunday afternoon show didn't start off too well for Nick Adams. This is what happened to him during his qualifying attempt. Now watch the slow motion replay and notice how hard his head hit the steering wheel and then the ground. You wouldn't think that Nick would be able to walk away from the crash, but he did. Let's move on now to the fourth heat. Johnny Parsons is in orange in the middle of the track and all of a sudden gets run into by Terry Babb, whose damage was too great to continue. Here's the start of the 30 lap feature as front row occupants Kevin Huntley and Dave Darlin left the others in their dust. That's how they continue to run, looking for a cushion. Who else is up on the cush? Jack Hewitt, who started 14th, but by halfway was already up to fifth. Four laps to go now. Hewitt had caught Huntley and Darlin. Dave was down on the bottom, trying the slide job for the lead, couldn't get it accomplished, and Hewitt found the cushion almost gone. Next lap, Hewitt down on the bottom, trying the slide job for second. But he hit the fence, caved in the plastic hub, and packed the rear wheel with dirt. So Huntley went on to win. Darlin was second. And third, an emotionally disappointed Hewitt, who wanted so bad to win for his dad, who 40 years ago took the first ever lap at Eldora. And Jack's father passed away recently. Our condolences to the family. We will be there at Eldora at Rossburg, Ohio, on August the 6th. The same USAC Stoops Freightliner Sprint Cars will be on Thunder at 9.30 Eastern Time from Eldora Speedway in Rossburg, Ohio. Now, a little bit of a bonus here for you tonight as the Dash for Cash is lining up, featuring the three heat winners and the fastest qualifier. They will line up like this on the front row, will be Doug Kalitta, car 22, and outside Chet Phillip. In the second row, we have Dave Steele and Jason McCord. Only four laps. It's worth a lot of money, though. Well, we ought to get a pretty good idea in this race who's going to be fast, who's going to be tough come feature time. It's a little bonus for these guys, that, especially a guy like Chet Phillip that knows that Coletto is out running him a little bit. He can try a little bit something different. Maybe he can fix the car, maybe get it going a little faster. Um, and if it doesn't work, you can always go back the other way for the feature. So it's just kind of a little bonus race for these guys, plus uh, the fact they're putting up some money for this thing, too. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, all uh, four guys have shown their strength here tonight in one way or another, so we're going to see who is the best. And when they come by this time, they'll get the green flag, or next time, I should say. Of course, Fast Qualifier today got the Turbines Incorporated Checkered Flag Award, which is already worth 250 bucks. so that was a, a pretty good bonus. We got the $2,000 from, from wins, and Brian Tyler and Dave Steele both have a chance at that, plus the semi-winner tonight. So uh, a lot of money up for grabs come feature time. Absolutely. So four laps to go here coming up the 10 lap semi feature featuring uh, the seven drivers who did not make it into the feature 
uh, during their heat races, and then the big 30 lapper coming up a little bit later. Down the back stretch they go. We get lined up all precisely here, getting set for the green flag. Coletta and Phillip on the front row. Steele and McCord in row number two off the fourth corner. Here they are. Green flag comes out. Dave Steele jumps quickly into second place over uh, Chet Phillip. Yeah, I'm going to be surprised. I guess they're going to let that thing go, but that was a terrible start. No, I think the yellow light is on. Yeah, yesterday. Wallace Shear. Wallace Shear, a flagman. He uh, he waved that flag a little more vigorously than I would have thought he would have had he going to restart that thing. But he's going to give him one more lap because Coletta got a huge, huge jump on uh, on Phillip. And uh, I didn't think they would probably let that stand. They want those guys to come off of there. But that just shows you it doesn't matter. They still want to win this race. <laughs> Phillip was using the little tricks there. And, and I think uh, Phillip did exactly the right thing because he got so far behind that it looked so bad they almost had to let him get the, have another start. Yeah, Dave Steele quickly moved into second and Phillip was back to third by the time they reached the start finish line. And uh, that just doesn't work in the USAC rank. So we'll try it again. Now Phillip stays up with a little bit better. And as a matter of fact, may have a wheel on him as they cross the line. But Phillip falls back into second position as Doug Coletta leads down the backstretch. Well, Coletta did get a nice jump, and he had the inside line. The inside position really is the preferred line here at Winchester nowadays. It used to be the outside was the best place, but since the repaving, the inside is a little bit better, and you can see that Coletta's using that uh, advantage that he's got to pull out into a fairly good lead, a 4-5 car length lead anyway, over uh, Chet Phillip. And with this race just being four laps, you got to make your move quickly and stay there. Dave Steele running back in third position, and McCord is in fourth. There is Doug Coletta, and you can see the advantage that he has on Chet Phillip as they approach the white flag. Just one more lap to go in the dash for cash. Coletta looks like he's going to run away with things here. Yeah, everybody got spread out pretty good. Coletta really uh, has that car operating very, very well. Phillip, uh, you know, can't really... Oh, look at the Whoa. dry rear tire smoke there coming off. And see, that's the thing that they're going to learn. They're going to go in... Oh, that's not the tire smoke. Looks like uh, oil's coming out of there. See wow. how shiny the inside of that right rear is? Yeah. Boy, that's a real bonus. If that happens in the feature, <laughs> history. <laughs> that uh, may spell bad things for Doug here. We'll uh, check on that when we have our interview with him in Victory Lane. But uh, uh, Doug Kalita does come home the winner in that dash for cash. Can you see anything, Larry, looking at it? No, I don't see anything, but it did appear that uh, the, the inside of that tire was shiny, which mm -hmm. would lead me to believe that it was a little bit of oil. If not, it could have been something actually rubbing on the tire. That He might have bent the sway bar or something, let something get over into that tire. It appeared to be uh, either tire smoke or some sort of uh, fluid, maybe brake fluid came out of there. I'm not sure. Well, it could have been tire smoke, but I think it had amounted to more than just what you think of uh, as regular uh, tire smoke going around the corners. It was coming off big time, even at reduced speed. Well, all right, we'll talk to him and see what he thinks about it when we come back to Winchester. Coletta, Phillips, Steele, and McCord, they finish that way in the dash for cash. This is truly a success story. This is a family-owned business in Winchester, Indiana. Wicks Pies, but they distribute nationally, and in fact, they are well-known nationally. They were making peanut butter pies when we were there earlier today, but I'll tell you what, you have never eaten a sugar cream pie like Wicks Pies makes. One of the uh, uh, employers here in the Randolph County, Winchester area, as a matter of fact, they're the second largest employer in the city. Well, nighttime here at Winchester, Indiana, gives us Doug Coletta as the winner of the Dash for Cash over Philip Steele and McCord. Here once again is Dave in Victory Lane. And speaking of family businesses, that's the reason we haven't seen much of Doug Coletta since the first three races of the year. You've been flying those airplanes a bunch, I hear. Yeah, kind of has been keeping me real busy. The uh, flying service, is, uh, it's doing okay. It uh, is obvious you haven't lost much of your touch in the uh, sprint car. We got to talk to all those other guys because they were uh, winners of heat races, so it's nice that you get to come here and, uh, and grace us with your presence. The car seemed to be working pretty well right at the end. Do you know what happened? Not real sure. The guys pulled it away uh, as soon as they seen something, and uh, I stayed here, so... I'm sure if anybody can get it fixed in time, of the, time for the future, it'd be those guys. Beyond the problem, that uh, obvious oil, and you said you, you felt it behaving a little weirdly, uh, was the car working to your satisfaction, or will you make some changes in it for the feature? It was working nice. Uh, the car's really been working nice all day, and uh, we're still trying to get that track record here, and maybe next time we'll get it. Well, you, so. you got the fast qualifier. Uh, you got the, the start. You won the start here. That was a piece of cake, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. I got off a little too fast in that first one, but... Uh, <laughs> We'll hopefully uh, go through there all right with the feature. 
Okay, man. Good job. Go, to, go get that car figured out. See what's wrong with it and get it back out here for the main event, okay? Okay. I'd just like to say uh, get well to my dad. He's at home, uh, Alan, so I hope uh, it gets well soon. Okay, man. We'll see you back here uh, maybe after the feature. They don't know for sure what's wrong with the car. They looked in there with a flashlight, saw a little bit of fluid, and said, get this thing out of here. we got to go diagnose it. So we'll have an update before the main event. Let's go to the booth. Okay, there is Kalita's car, and you can see them back there working on the right rear. Yeah, you know, it was fluid. You can see how shiny the inside of that right rear tire was. So it almost had to be something that was coming out of there and, and spraying off of the exhaust pipe and up through that area. So uh, he was leaking some sort of fluid. I'm not sure what it is. Pretty much appeared to be oil, but it could have been power steering fluid, could have been brake fluid, could have been about anything. We'll keep our eye on that situation as work continues there. Meanwhile, let's show you some more highlights. We've shown you some USAC sprints. How about the midgets? Well, they call it the action track in Terre Haute, Indiana. The USAC midgets were there recently, and as per usual, the half-mile dirt track didn't disappoint. No, this four breast formation isn't the way they'll start the THAT Classic at Terre Haute the week before the Holman Classic. This is the green flag for 30 laps of racing with pole sitter Jason Leffler getting the jump on Andy Mishner, Jay Drake, and Billy Boat. Boat's spin put him at the rear of the field for a restart, but that only gave him incentive to make moves like this. Just as he got around Jay Drake for second, David Bridges nullified the pass when he got on his head in turn number two. But by the time the white flag waved, Boat had come from last to challenge Leffler for the lead. With Billy up on top and Jason playing huggy pole, the two slugged it out. The top was the best, and by the time they reached the end of the backstretch, it was obvious that Boat was going to win. But watch Tony Stewart in white overhaul Drake for third. A gear change made during one of the Reds was what Boat credited with his sixth career USAC midget win, first of 97. How about that, huh? Nice performance by Billy Boat. However, the USAC Midgets have raced twice since then at Anderson, Indiana. Tracy Hines was the winner, Jimmy McCune second, Ted Hines third, Andy Mishner and Jason Leffler fourth and fifth. And then the next night, they were at Mount Lawn Speedway, Newcastle, Indiana, with Robbie Flock taking the checkered flag over Jason Leffler, Ted Hines, Dane Carter, and Jeff Sands. Now, the point standings. Tracy Hines is 39 behind Leffler. Jay Drake is 67 behind. Chris Schultz is fourth in the point standings, and Tony Elliott is fifth. Well, I think Dave is caught up with uh, some of the guys in the crew down there. Let's see if we can find out what's wrong with Doug Coletta's car. Well, it was a little weird because Coletta said he, he felt something before the car started to smoke. The diagnosis is this. The Panhard bar broke, and that in turn broke the shock absorber. It's the second shock that they've broken tonight. So they've had to borrow a shock absorber, and they're doing a little modification on it. There you see it's about ready to go on. Don Schilling is uh, ramrodding the effort here. Don, of course, was a, an excellent racer himself, won here at Winchester, now retired and handling the maintenance on the car. They think they can get it fixed but they are hustling down here. Tell you what, that uh, the Panhard rod, it, it had to be something back there in the right rear, and we said it was either the smoke off something rubbing on the tire or liquid. And what happens when the Panhard rod, rod breaks? It lets the whole axle move over, and it lets that big, you saw that piece where the shock was uh, sticking out there where the shock hooks on? That was actually rubbing against the tire. If that goes on for a couple of laps, it's going to blow the right rear tire, so they have to make sure they get it fixed right. There we see Brian Gerster. He's also making some repairs on his car. So, so. so all kinds of activity down in the pit area while we're on a break here from the actual action on the racetrack. We have uh, the 30-lap, make that the 10-lap semi-feature coming up here in just a few moments. A 30-lap feature race will end the activity here at Winchester. There's Doug Coletta as he took the dash for cash checkered flag, but a problem with that car has his crew hard at work. We'll be right back. ESPN 2's Thunder from Winchester being brought to you by 1-800-COLLECT, the way we call collect today. Well, the cars are being uh, all lined up for the 10-lap semi-feature event coming up here in just a few moments as the crowd looks on. Very warm and humid day in central Indiana today. As Dave told you earlier, we had some major thunderstorms. In fact, even 
a tornado touchdown not too far from Winchester Speedway, but it, as far as I know, it didn't rain a drop here this afternoon. We missed all of it. <laughs> yeah, it sure, it uh, sure looked bad everywhere else around here. I had to take a couple detours around down power lines, so it was bad everywhere. <laughs> there you quite a, got a quick shot of uh, Gus Wasson's car. It's out for the evening. They continue to work on Doug Kalita's machine. Well, we talked about how well the uh, former and current Thunderheads are doing in higher levels of racing. We mentioned the IRL event, the most recent one, which was uh, held this past weekend at a brand new racetrack out in the western part of the country. Let's take a look. After sitting out the last two Indy Racing League events due to injury, Scott Sharp qualified on the pole for the Samsonite 200 at the new Pikes Peak International Raceway. Sunday's race was also the first sanctioned solely by the IRL since it split from USAC. Sharp's day was short-lived, however, as his car slid backwards into the turn two wall. His was the first in a series of nine crashes, including Jimmy Kite's one-car incident and this crash involving Billy Boat and Roberto Guerrero. All told, 82 of the 200 laps were run under caution. But Tony Stewart, still in search of his initial IRL win, dominated throughout. On the final restart, he maintained the lead and took the checkered flag for Team Menard's first long-awaited victory. I, I'm glad more for the guys than myself. Uh, you know, I was fortunate enough in 95 to win three championships, and these guys haven't had a win yet, and, and this is finally their one shining moment. So, uh, you know, this is probably better for them than anybody. It's just nice to get the monkey off our back. We know we've been fast everywhere, but we just have had a hard time finally nailing the win down, and now we've got it underway, and now maybe we can keep a string of them going. It was getting kind of old not winning, to tell you the truth. And I'm really, really, really happy we finally did it. This team deserves the win. Uh, you know, it, it shows that perseverance pays off, really, because we have tried so many times to win, and we've gotten so close, and it's been so discouraging to everyone. And we just had to, had to keep at it. So congratulations to Tony and John. Now, the only shot you saw in that highlights package was Jimmy Kite up against the wall. But believe me, he had a fantastic weekend. He came out right out of the box, and he was fast in the IRL car that he had never driven before, and certainly a big future for him. And the second thing I want to mention is that uh, there were two injuries during the weekend, Jim Guthrie and Scott Sharp both. Both have been released from the hospital, so that's very good news. Now let's get down to Dave. I don't know how Stewart won that thing without Kenny Irwin there to motivate him, but congratulations to one Thunderhead graduate. And I want to put this guy on the spot because I'm hearing all these rumors. Roger Penske is on television talking about having his eye on Kenny Irwin to drive a stock car next year. You going to drive for uh, for Roger Penske? Ah, uh, no, I don't think so. You know, he told me that uh, that he didn't want to run a two-car team. So I guess that kind of puts me out. Uh, right now it does. So does that mean you're going to do the Jack Roush deal then and drive the fourth Roush car? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. Uh, me and Jack, me and Jack haven't talked, so uh, I don't think that's it either. So we've eliminated two of the rumors. Now you're prepared, I'm sure, to enlighten me and tell me what you will be driving next year. I sure wish I could. Uh, right now, <laughs> I would really do. Uh, but right now, you know, I'm just I'm doing the truck deal, and I got a really great deal with Ray Bestus and. Um, I'm uh, just working as hard as I can on that. So there's something else in the mill, but you're not ready to talk about it yet. That's what it boils down to, huh? Um, maybe. Yeah, maybe. okay. Well, <laughs> let us be the first to know, okay? Tell me about, the, first of all, you go to Milwaukee this week, and yeah. uh, you're going to win that thing. Yeah, and then yeah. you got a, a monster weekend coming up. You're going to get back to your roots uh, the weekend of the Brickyard deal. Tell me about that. Yeah, I can't wait. Uh, I'm going to get to run uh, Johnny Vance's uh, Sprint car or Silver Crown car. Then we're going to run the truck and a... Um, a bush car for uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, so uh, that'd be a pretty neat deal too. Let's see now, is that a Kentucky Fried Chicken Winston Cup deal coming next year maybe? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Oh, we're going to get these guys. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get them all on a bidding war. This young man needs a ride. Send your checks, too. Listen, whatever it is, we wish you good luck, okay? Thank you very much. Thank right. That's Kenny Irwin, Jr., star in the trucks, and maybe soon to be Winston Cup star. We're going to take a commercial break and come back with more. We're at Winchester. It's the Stoops Freightliner Sprint Car Series, and we'll have more right after this. Irwin, get out of here. When you tune in to Speed Week this Thursday night, not Friday night as regular, but Thursday night at 12.30 a.m., you will get an update on the qualifying for the Pepsi 400 and on the Pikes Peak Hill Climb, which happens on Friday. We'll bring you up to date on who qualified well for that. That's Speed Week Thursday night 
at 12.30 a.m. And you've been out of Pikes Peak, haven't you, Larry? I sure have, and i got to tell you, that is one spectacular race. There's 156 corners in that racetrack. Now, I'm going to tell you what, I had trouble with two here at Winchester a few years ago, so I can't imagine going up that hill at the kind of speeds those guys run at. I, I know Mar Mario Andretti said on an interview that I just recently saw that it was the scariest racetrack he ever ran on. <laughs> Okay, let's take a look at the lineup now for the semi-feature event. Gus Wasson, car number 23, supposed to start inside the front row. Derek Davidson, 17, on the outside. Second row, we'll have Joey Kerr, car number 44, and Billy Pewterbaugh in 16. The third row, Mike Blake in 81, and Gene Lee Gibson in number 0. And in the fourth row, Steve Anderson in number 5. Gus Wasson is scratched for the evening. So everybody on that inside row moves up. Kerr will be on the front row, Blake in the second, and Anderson in the third. There is Billy Pewterball, who uh, has been driving sprint cars for a couple of years here around the central Indiana area. However, he was in the Formula Ford 2000 race at Pikes Peak International Raceway on Sunday for the IRL event, and it ended up in the wall. That is him in the red car hitting the wall. And uh, Larry Foyt and Corey Weatherell uh, also involved in the incident. Nobody was injured in the accident, but uh, Billy Pewterbaugh's uh, indoctrination into Formula Ford 2000 racing kind of ended on a sour note. He tells me that he will not be doing any more Formula Ford 2000 racing yet the rest of this year, but he does plan to do a bit of it next year. Yeah, and that was a tough break. You know, he uh, he was running pretty good. He'd gotten all the way from the back up to the top 15, 12th or so, and uh, just kind of pinched a little bit when somebody crowded him, and uh, that's the result. And that's the way you learn not to do those sorts of things, I suppose. Okay, let's see how this one goes. The first four get their time back. Everybody transfers to the feature race, however. Green flag comes out. Derek Davidson on the outside of the front row has the slight advantage as they go through the corners and down the back stretch. Davidson oh. has the lead and look out. Joey Kerr's side. Ways. Boy, these guys have done that two or three times tonight. I got to tell you what, I, I don't know exactly how they hang on when they get that far sideways, but Kerr caught his car and got it going straight again. Pewter ball running third, car number 16. Fourth position is Gene Lee Gibson in the yellow car. That's Joey Kerr running second and 44. He closes in on Derek Davidson in the third and fourth corners. Davidson hanging on to the lead, though. Yeah, Kerr, after he ran that first corner way down in the very, very bottom of the racetrack, giving Davidson all sort of room. But now that it seems like he's found a little bit of a groove down there on the inside, and he Whoa. really likes it. Look at this, side by side. Yeah, and now they, oh, he's got a little squirrely right there. It's going to give Davidson the chance. Davidson couldn't take advantage of it, though. So Kerr got back around him. Nice job. Joey Kerr from Sailor Park, Ohio, is driving for former driver Greg Stobb. He has made five feature races this year. His best finish has been 11th, and it was right here at Winchester. He is in the lead of the semi-feature event. Davidson still running second. Now Pewterball may be climbing up to uh, challenge Davidson. Yeah, Pewterball seems to have found a nice little line where he gets way up high entering the corner kind of diamonds down off the bottom and gets a good run down the straightaway. Seems to have that thing working a little better when he drives it that way. And that's the good thing about this racetrack. You can run several different places. Not very many pavement tracks you can do that with, but here you can uh, choose your place. You're brave enough to go there, put her there. That's Steve Anderson that's running at the bottom of the track very slowly. He's getting some experience on the high banks of Winchester as we continue to watch Billy Pewterball, car 16, try to take second place from Derek Davidson. Got the car to the inside once again there in the corner, but couldn't get the job done. And there you can see the disadvantage of that six cylinder. As long as you keep that thing pumping and keep the RPMs wound up, you're okay. But you get a little bit shook loose like he did back there. It doesn't have the horsepower to pull itself on past anybody, and you give up a lot because of that uh, lack of horsepower. Just like that, he again pulls even with him in the corner, but going down the straightaway just doesn't have the muscle it takes to make the pass. And so Davidson hangs on to the lead as Joey Kerr continues to drive away. Now he's got a better oh. shot at it. Nope, couldn't do it. Very, very, very close. He had a nice shot at him coming up there, but he just can't do it. He does it all in the corner, and down the straightaway, Davidson just uh, pulls him by a couple car lengths. This is the last lap. Let's see if we have a change for second position again. Pewterball goes to the inside. Can't do it. Joey Kerr is out in front. He's going to win the semi-feature race. There's the checkered flag. Hey, oh, look at that. And he did it. Pewterball did it in the fourth corner. Nice job. He just slid it right up in front of him. He and uh, Davidson had to let out of the throttle. He couldn't run over him. So. The old slide job, huh? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> So it's Pewterball finishing second, Davidson third, Gene Lee Gibson finished fourth, Blake was fifth, and Steve Anderson finished in sixth position. Joey Kerr is the winner of the race.
He comes into this event 16th in the point, so by making the feature, he's going to pick up a few more. And he's headed for victory lane right now. Actually, he's taking another lap on the racetrack, isn't he? He's making sure that... <laughs> he probably hasn't won a semi in a yeah. while. He thought he'd just take two two victory laps instead of one. So Savoring went... every moment of it. He did a nice job, though. He got out front, did a very, very nice job to win that race. All right. He'll be in victory lane when we come back to Winchester, Indiana Speedway. This is ESPN2's Thunder on a beautiful Wednesday evening in central Indiana. And... We were going to go to break, but uh, we understand that uh, we have a fire in a car, and so we'll hold off the break right now until we see what's going on. What is going on down there? That's Pewterball, isn't it? Yeah, that's Pewterball. He's getting out of the car. It looks like they're getting down, uh, looking down inside. It might have been a grease fire down around the U-joint. They're looking down the inside of the car. And uh, what happens sometimes that the U-joint gets real hot down in there, uh, grease will catch on fire. It doesn't appear to be anything real, real major, but uh, everybody certainly got down there around. Ooh, man. Yeah, you can see that some of the paint has been uh, burned off of the uh, bottom part of the race car, so there was indeed some uh, flame down in there. It's all over right now. Bill, uh, Dave, uh, what's Billy say? Well, Billy's in the neighborhood. Let me grab him here and let him get his helmet off. Hey, Billy, don't run off, buddy. We want to talk to you. Uh, you, you were uh, creating a lot of heat there for Davidson running that second spot, but then all of a sudden you had more heat than you wanted to deal with. What happened anyway? Oh, I don't know what really happened. All I see was some, uh, smelled some smoke and some, some red flames, so I tried to get out of the car as quick as I could. And didn't seem like nobody wanted to help me. <laughs> you got stuck in there. Did you get a hot seat? Not really. I just saw the fire and wanted to get out of there before anything else caught on fire and tried to burn me. Car okay, you think, to go back for the main? Yeah, we, we had a lot of trouble in the in the heat rays and through there, but we fixed it. We fixed it for the semi and we should be we should be in there for the feature. All right. Good job driving and a good job getting out of that thing too. Thanks. All right, that's Billy Pewterball. <laughs> he had the hot seat for a while. I think he's gonna be okay. I don't think he heard anything too bad. Let's okay. go back up top side. Well he made a nice pass there for second place in the closing stages. So uh, Billy Pewterball, we will hopefully watch him in uh, the feature race and this is what happened as uh, we were quite concerned about uh, him possibly being injured when we saw smoke and flame coming from that car you can see there they had trouble getting the neck strap unhooked and he was uh, trying to get out of the car and couldn't get out of there because they had that neck strap hooked uh, to the shoulder strap they couldn't get the shoulder strap but out from underneath his neck strap to get him out of the car where that fire was was down nearer the back so it wasn't the universal joint like I had thought it might have been I'm not sure what it was doing the left side down uh, underneath the seat really well whatever the case everybody is okay and that's the most important part so we talk to the second place finisher let's hold off the break while we talk to the winner of the semi feature Dave yeah we're hustling down here trying to keep up with all of it this guy kind of got overshadowed when the runner-up caught on fire but let's get the opportunity to say hi and meet Joey Kirk congratulations good job thank you uh, we made a bunch of changes tonight to the race car. And my car owner stayed home, and uh, our other guy that helps us stayed home. So we're kind of three kids on our own. And I want to give a special thanks to Carl and Ryan. They're they're super good help, and uh, couldn't do it without them. And uh, it's kind of neat driving for a guy like Stop too, who uh, he he knows his way around these things. I expect he can give you some good advice too, huh? Yeah, he uh, he helps us out a lot. He uh, we go into every racetrack and kind of got a basic setup. Uh, versus where if we were doing it on our own, we wouldn't have anything to go by, and uh, Greg's super help, and I want to thank him, too. We got some videotape here. We're going to get you run over by your own race car, so let's move you a little bit. There is uh, the pass for the lead. Now, this is Davidson. No, this is you. This is you all sideways. Dirt tracking, huh? Yeah, dirt, dirt tracking on the pavement. Uh, the tires were still a little cold, and uh, we just changed the left front, put a bunch more stagger in it, and it really helped out a lot, and I was just adjusting to the new uh, race car, but I really like it a lot. Here's where you put him away, but let me ask you about the sensation of getting one that sideways on pavement. Is it as easy as it looks? It's not comfortable, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Things can go wrong in a yeah. big hurry when you get that sideways out. Yeah, yeah, very much. What about the outlook now for the main event? Do you, you think you can get the car into the top five? Can you win this thing? What, uh, what would make you happy with the outcome tonight? Uh, I'd be hop happy with a top ten finish. We're trying for the... Um 
We're trying for the true value rookie of the year, and uh, I'd be happy with a top 10 finish. I'd be ecstatic with a top 10 finish. Okay, man. Well, you got a shot at two grand tonight. Congratulations. Welcome to Thunder. Thank you. All right, that's Joey Kerr. He's won the deal. He's in the running for the wins money. We got stock cars out there running around. We got a commercial break. We are busy here at Winchester Speedway, and we're glad you're here with all the Thunderheads enjoying the USAC action. We'll be right back with more after this very brief timeout. Welcome back to Winchester, Indiana Speedway. ESPN 2's Thunder for the USAC Sprint Cars here on this uh, half-mile racetrack right now, however. The NASCAR stocks are out there with a little bit of fender banging going on, and I can tell you who's in the lead. It's car number two, driven by Mike Roundtree from Montmorency, Indiana. And running in second position is car number 34, Dave Ellis from Cincinnati. There is the 38 of Mike. Whoop! We got a crash. Man, we do have a crash. That uh, looks like uh, round. Well, we have two number twos. That's Mike, either Mike Windsor or Mike Roundtree. I believe it is uh, Mike Windsor. Windsor. Yeah. We spun down there in a two car and got uh, down to the inside. I think that's the second time he spun a little earlier on the original start. So. Well, let's tell you what you might encounter if you visit the town of Winchester, Indiana. Him coming up here in the uh, coming weeks. They have the first annual Children's Fair going on Saturday, July the 5th. Educational fun fair for the families. It runs from 9 to 9. They're going to have magic shows and clowns and country music singers and games and prizes. And even Dr. Jack Miller's Crestmobile will be on hand the 12th will be McDonald's 25th anniversary old-timers weekend here at uh, Winchester Speedway with the Grand Marshal Johnny Rutherford on the 27th of July. The Indiana State Late Model Championship Series, a 100-lap special coming up, and NASCAR Super Stocks will be in twin features. So a lot of racing coming up here in, at the Winchester Speedway and a lot going on in the town of Winchester. Let's take a look at what happened a little earlier on the original start up here. You can see the two cars up at the top. The one in front of the two car got a little bit of a bump and he went right down in front and got T-boned. And I think that's the 2W car of Mike Windsor that we saw. And look at this. The other car goes up towards the inside. That's the 23 car of Tim McLaughlin. He goes clear up, clear on the inside of the crash wall back there, clear down the back straightaway in the grass and rejoined him down in turns number three. <laughs> I'm telling you. Hey, we mentioned the name uh, Johnny Rutherford. As you may know, he uh, has a bout of viral meningitis that he is recuperating from. And JR, get well soon. We want to see you here at Winchester and uh, back on the IRL trail also. Now, uh, what are we doing? Going to uh, Dave to Spain? Dave, what do you got? Well, I'm going to sneak up on a couple of guys here. Talk about good fortune. I could get the update, first of all, on Doug Kalitta. You got her fixed? Yeah, it looks good. We're going to be all right. You able to make the adjustments that you wanted to for the feature as well as the repairs? Yeah, we've, we've been at it to do that also. So what are you talking to him about? Well, we're just... He's just talking about the, you know, the race and um, where he's going to start and stuff. That's about it. You planted some strategy here. We're talking to Kevin Thomas, by the way. He is just the leader in this series. And a third guy, you're making a pretty nice adaptation here to Winchester. This is a little out of your normal element, isn't it? Well, yeah, it is, I guess. But uh, I really like Winchester, and I'm getting to like the pavement more every time. So, you know, I'm starting to understand what to do to the car, and I've asked, asked a lot of guys, and Doug's been helping me. So... We'll get her faster. Oh, are you coming to him for advice then? Is that what's going on here? Yeah, he, you just saw him run out, you know, however fast he was going. So I, he definitely wasn't asking me for any tips. <laughs> well, you know that this guy is tough when the point leader is coming to ask him for advice. Good luck to both of you. Come with me. I want to walk down here and see if I can find Pat Abel. Remember the uh, Silver Crown race at IRP? What was it, back in May? Well, here's the guy who won it in the Hoffman family sprinter. But he says they're struggling a little bit here tonight. What What's the struggle, Pat? Well, we're, we're just struggling to find the balance of the car. We hope we got it here for the race. We've made a lot of changes tonight. We just need to get the car comfortable and get it to go around the track fast. How do you like this racetrack compared to, say, Oswego, which is home for you? I was here once in 1990, and we had a lot of fun here. I've never been here in a sprint car, and it's a very fast track, and, you know, I need to get used to it, too. And tonight's the first time I've been out there with other cars, and I need to learn how to pass out here. So are you just here to kind of take it easy, get some seat time, or do you get, take that thing from eighth and go to the front? If I got a race car under me, I'm going to try to take it to the front. I love that kind of attitude. That's Pat Abel. He's a legend of the Supers, and he's getting his first look at Winchester tonight from the seat of a sprint car. Back up top.
And the uh, stock race continues here with um, Roundtree still in the lead. The 34 car of uh, Dave Ellis is re still running in second position, but the leader has a very substantial advantage on the rest of the field as he goes down the back stretch and sets the car into turn three. Yeah, he got off to a great start. He's been leading ever since, uh, you know, the first couple of laps and uh, just pulled away. But these guys back here in the pack are really battling each other. That's a battle for third. The 38 is Mike Bryan and the 51 is Dave Renner. Now, Renner in 51 hosts a racing talk show in Cincinnati on radio station WMOH called Pit Talk. He's from Mason, Ohio, and right now is running in fourth spot as the 38 tries to take second position. Mike Bryant trying to take it away from Dave Ellis. Yeah, Renner's got a tire rubbing back there in the back. Whoops. He's going to be in big trouble pretty soon. The That's 28 of Bill Bartholomew is in trouble. He's from Sharonville, Ohio, which is on the north, north edge of Cincinnati. Yeah, he spun down to the inside. You can see clear down there, there's some gravel down on the inside of the, uh, the pavement way down on the bottom. And uh, he slid off the racetrack and down that gravel trying to get the thing refired and back up onto the racing surface. So the yellow flag comes out here in the uh, NASCAR Winston Racing Series Super Stock event. The replay will show us what happened to Bill Bartholomew. Oh, I think he got just a touch of help right there. Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> Scott got, Fields. Scott Fields got into the back of him coming off a of turn two, and he uh, did a big slide for life, clear down that back straightaway, and ended up on the infield down in turn number three. But Bill is okay. He's climbing out of the car. It would appear, however, as if his race is over. Well, we'll tell you who won in just a moment. Stay with us. We're coming back with more racing from Winchester, Indiana Speedway. Here's another family-owned business in the town of Winchester, Indiana. It's called Silvertown. They make commemorative coins for uh, various events. They made one for Roger Holdeman last year, and they're making one now for the upcoming 25th anniversary of Old Timers Weekend. Silvertown, there's the uh, coin they made in commemoration of and remembrance of Roger Holdeman and uh, as I said they're making a new one for the uh, old timers weekend coming. well and they, they make they deal in all kinds of gold and silver in there and they've got beautiful jewelry as well as the coins and all sorts of things and they buy and sell gold as well so we take a look at some of the people down through there you saw Kenny Irwin actually down under uh, Chet Phillips car maybe giving him a little bit of advice on uh, what they should change there's Gus Wasson's car. He is out for the evening. That's Gus there walking up to the car. Well, maybe not. Maybe they've got it fixed. Well, anyway, we'll see in a minute. We're going to take next week off, but in two weeks, we will be back with more Thunder. That's on July the 16th. It'll be the same USAC Stoops Freightliner Sprint Cars, but from Indianapolis Raceway Park in Claremont, Indiana. Our airtime will be 9.30 Eastern time. We hope you'll join us for our next edition of Thunder two weeks from tonight. Well, Gus Wasson's climbing in the car, so uh, looks like that he may uh, be able to run in this feature race coming up. That's interesting. That thing was uh, sat there. Nobody looked like they were working on it uh, all night long. I don't know whether they were waiting on a piece to come get it fixed or what exactly happened, but you're right. It does appear like he is going to be able to run the feature event. Well, that's good news. Dave Despain is standing by, by uh, standing by with J.J. Yaley. J.J. Yaley. Sorry, boys, I lost contact with Houston there for a moment, but we got you now. And we got J.J. You know this guy from the SCRA sprints. What are you doing back here running on pavement, man? Uh, we're back here mainly for the dirt, but, you know, there's a couple pavement shows in between, and uh, you know, we just have the action diecast car here giving a shot on his pavement. A lot of guys here, of course, have special pavement cars. I understand this thing's won a bunch of dirt races, and when you're done here, it's going to go win a bunch more. Tell me about that. Yeah, you know, we just had to convert one over for pavement. Uh, here in a couple weeks is our last pavement race while we're here. We're going to switch it over to dirt and uh, go win some dirt races here in a couple weeks with it. You picked a pretty good place to come learn how to race pavement. How do you like Winchester? Uh, for my third time on pavement, Winchester is uh, it's pretty hairy out there. You know, I was a little bit loose in the heat race, and it felt like I was on dirt more than pavement. But uh, we made a couple changes, and uh, hopefully the Arizona Race Mart uh, Southwest Grain Car will be going a little bit better. Okay, man, good to see you back here. Hope you have a lot of success. Thank you. All right, that is J.J. Yaley. I'm having trouble hearing you, boys. Let's go back topside. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. 
Uh, it's kind of interesting. I asked uh, JJ what JJ stood for, thinking that it would have stood for his first and middle name. That's not the case at all. His real name, and he says only his grandmother calls him his real name, is Chris. And the JJ stands for Jimmy Jack. Now, he's a second generation driver. His dad was Cactus Jack. Uh, Yaley, and uh, so JJ stands for Jimmy Jack. How about that? <laughs> How about that? Yeah, he, he's uh, his father is quite a character. If you've never met, met Cactus Jack Yaley, he's uh, he's been around a long, long time. He's obviously helped his son uh, get going, and it's a it's a family affair. And uh, JJ really gets in and busts his butt on that race car. I've seen him working on that thing uh, just about every racetrack we've been to so far. There's the winner of the NASCAR Winston Racing Series Stoop with Super Stock Show here tonight, Mike Roundtree from Montmorency. Indiana. He has beaten all others in their feature race here tonight. We've got the feature of the Freightliner Sprint Cars coming up here in just a moment when we come back to Winchester. Little track cleanup going on here at Winchester. A uh, little oil put down by one of the stock cars. That'll be cleaned up quickly and before you knew it we'll have a a whole host of sprint cars out there for 30 laps of racing. Johnny Heidenreich is going to start on the pole of the race here tonight. We understand that uh, there are a couple of changes in the lineup due to th things that have gone on down in the pit area. Let's check those out with Dave. Well, first of all, the update on uh, Gus Wasson is this. They broke a panhard bar. Sound familiar? Kalita says his is fine, but Gus didn't have an extra one and they didn't have any way to fix it. That's the reason they didn't work on the car all night. He's just gonna go out there and start the race and maybe collect a few points. But Billy Pewterbaugh, who had a hot seat here a minute ago, has now got another problem. What's going on here? Uh, we're just trying to trying to fix and fix the motor and kind of cool it down a little bit. But we should be fine for the feature. Are they going to send you to the back, I understand? Did you know that? Uh, no, I didn't know that. I'm <laughs> kind of glad you told me. Um, we, had to, we had to change a tire because the tire went bad on us. So uh, that's why they're sending us to the back. Can you win it from back there? That ought to be pretty spectacular. That'd be nice, but uh, hopefully we can finish in the top ten. Okay, man, go get him. Billy Pewterball had to change a tire. He'll have to start at the back. Well, of course, the ruling is you must start the feature on the tire that you qualify on, and if you do not, uh, you go to the back of the pack, and that's what they're talking about. There is a tire rule here in USAC. You have to run a Hoosier. It has to be certain compounds that you run, and you have to start the... Uh, even if you replace it, you must put on the same compound, I believe. But uh, if you don't start on the same tire that you qualify on, you must go to the back of the pack. Well, while the cars are being readied for the feature, let's take a look at the heat results. In heat number one tonight, Chet Phillip was the winner over Doug Coletta, Brad Armstrong, Tim Cox, Joey Kerr, and Steve Anderson were the top six finishers. Well, heat number two, Dave Steele, Brian Tyler, Kevin Thomas finished in third, Pat Abold, Mike Blake, and Billy, Billy Pewterbaugh came in sixth position. The top four transfer automatically to the feature. Jason McCord won it going away from Gerster, Yaley, Heidenreich, Derek Davidson fifth, Gene Lee Gibson was in sixth. Then we had the dash for cash. Right, Doug Coletta won that in fine fashion. Chet Phillip ran second. Also, he uh, did a nice job. Dave Steele and Jason McCord, of course, rounded out the other two positions. The semi results, Joey Kerr the winner, Pewterbaugh second, then Davidson, Gene Lee Gibson, Mike Blake, and Steve Anderson, and again, everybody will make the feature event. The wins challenge money tonight, it could be won by Brian Tyler, Dave Steele, or Joey Kerr. Those three guys are uh, can win the $2,000 bonus. Also, Gene Lee Gibson and Steve Anderson won the winning Spirit Awards, $250. Let's go down pit side to Dave. We shall not start tonight's feature without talking to the defending champion in this division, and that would be Brian Tyler, who likes Winchester a whole lot. How about tonight, buddy? Y'all set to do some business out here? Yeah, we didn't qualify quite as good as I was hoping to. I mean, I wanted to be quick time, second quick. Starting third row inside, should be a pretty good race. They're pushing them off all around you here. What's the strategy in 30 laps, or is there any? You just put your hoof in it and go. Uh, you go flat out from the green flag to the checker. Okay, man, go out there and win one of these things, all right? Thank you. All right, that's Brian Tyler. He won the championship last year without a main event victory. Consistency was the name of the game for him in 1996. Tonight, he's going to go out and try to put a Winchester victory in the bank. He'll start for the inside of row three. We'll take a commercial break and come back with the main event. 
Bob Jenkins and Larry Rice up here in the booth. Dave Despain pit side as we get set for the feature race here this evening. The Stoops Freightliner USAC Sprint Cars are being pushed off each year. Those who have contributed to sprint car racing over the years are inducted into the Hall of Fame out in Iowa. Let's take a look at the, some of the inductees from this year. The event was held on the Marion County Fairgrounds adjacent to the legendary Half Mile Oval and Museum. Fifteen people were slated to be inducted into the hall for the eighth annual event. Inductees included legendary auto racing filmmaker Dick Wallet. Considered a real honor and a tremendous pleasure to have been voted in and it's great to have people that I've been around for all these years that think that I the job I did was good enough to uh, nominate me first and that I had friends enough to uh, uh, get me in, elected into the Hall of Fame. And I think that anybody who has an opportunity like this has got to be just uh, on top of the world and their feelings of the honor to, to, to accept this award. Also present was 1963 IMCA Sprint Car Champion Gordon Woolley. Frankly, I thought I'd never be here because I didn't win the Indy or something, and I thought that's the only way I'd ever got here, but it's just wonderful. I, I can't describe it, it's so wonderful. Here's a look at those who were inducted into the Hall of Fame this year. And boy, there are some great names from auto racing in that list, Larry. Oh, there certainly is. Bobby Enzer, Kenny Weld, who obviously just passed away recently. Spider Webb, Gordon Willie, all these guys. Joey James, of course, they run a memorial at Salem for him every year. A lot of great, great race car drivers. Dick Tobias got killed in a race car a few years ago. who won the Holman Classic. So good to see them all recognized uh, in such a fashion. And here are some more. And again, uh, people like Bruce Bromey, who was an owner and mechanic and a builder, and Barney Wimmer also elected into the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame in 1997. Dave, who you picking in this race here tonight to feature? <laughs> Let's see. Is there a second question? <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what. Oops. What happened? He went away. <laughs> I tell you what, his, his mic just quit working. <laughs> well, that's one way not... That's right. That's kind of like hanging up the phone in the middle of a word when you put your button on. They think the phone quit. You really just hung up. That's yeah, what Dave did to us. right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you back with us, Dave? As I was saying, <laughs> this guy behind me is working on my equipment. It's not what you think. I had the feeling when we watched that first heat that we might be seeing a preview of the main event, but I had a little question about Kalina because he's been away for a long time, and then they had the problem with the suspension. But when he was down there talking to Kevin, I got the feeling that he is definitely squared away. We know how good Philip is on this racetrack. If I, what, what, what is three, what is it when you pick two? I would pick either. Kalina or Philip to win the race tonight. Okay, I guess that would be the daily double, wouldn't it? Anyway, let's take a look at the starting lineup. On the pole, car number 96, Johnny Heidenreich, substituting for the uh, injured driver. Mark Casella. Mark Casella thank you. Outside of the first row will be Dave Steele. Second row, Chet Phillip, car 77, Brian Gerster, onboard camera in car 19. Third row, another onboard camera, Brian Tyler, car 4C, and there's Doug Kalitta in car number 22. Fourth row, Brad Armstrong, 99, and Pat Abold, 69. Fifth row, Jason McCord in 95, and Kevin Thomas in number three. Row number six, Derek Davidson in 17, and Joey Kerr in 44. Seventh row, Billy Pewterball and J.J. Yaley, 16 and 4J. The eighth row will have Tim Cox and Gene Lee Gibson. Row number nine, Mike Blake and Steve Anderson. And all alone back in row number 10 will be Gus Wasson in car number 23. Well, this is going to be a very interesting race. It's going to be interesting to see how quickly Coletta can get to the front. Uh, if Phillip gets it, a big break and at the first of the race gets out front very early then it's going to be a tough tough road for Kalita to catch him get around him he can catch him but getting around him is going to be a whole different story we're on board with brian tyler as he lines up behind chet phillip in the yellow car number 77 there is doug Kalita and tyler alongside yeah that's uh Brian Tyler, of course, and it, tell you what, it's going to be a very, very interesting start. Heidenreich up there in that uh, first row might uh, might surprise some people. He got a little squirrely there in the heat race, but you have to remember, he got here very late. He never got one hot lap. He got two qualifying laps, so that heat race was really the only hot laps he got. I'm sure that they made some adjustments on that car before the start of this race. 
Okay, we should go racing this time around. 30 laps of Stoops Freightliner USAC Sprint Car action from Winchester Speedway in Indiana. Heidenreich and Steele lead him down to the green flag and we're underway. Dave Steele got a terrific jump. Gerster jumped right in behind him. Those two guys just went around Heidenreich uh, extremely easily, it looked like. But now Heidenreich's holding up. Here's Chet Phillips down on the inside as he goes around Heidenreich. Heidenreich's bottoming out. That's the spark you see. And Heidenreich is running in fifth position at the end of lap number one as Dave Steele has jumped out ahead of Brian Gerster, Chet Phillip, and Doug Kalina. Those are the top four as they go through the banking in turns three and four. And now complete lap number two. We're right back here now with Tyler back in about sixth position as he's right behind Heidenreich. And you can see right now there's first four guys pulling just a little bit away from everybody else. Dave Steele keeping the lead over Brian Gerster, but by only about one car length as the first four run nose to tail here on the high banks of Winchester. That's Doug Coletta, fast qualifier, bringing up the tail of this group. But boy, they are really battling for position. You can see that Gerster seems to be very fast through the middle of the corner, but he gets a little bit loose coming off. And if that's the case, then it's going to be bad news for later in the race. Managing your tires. I mean, you got to run flat out. you got to run really, really hard here. But who, the way you have your car set up and the tire management is so very, very important. We heard Phillips say that he'd been burning the right front off of his car. That we'll see what happens in about 20 laps. On board with Brian Gerster. He's running in second position. Up ahead is the leader of the race, Dave Steele. And Gerster hasn't blinked since the green flag dropped. And he's got those eyes wide open. He knows that both Chet Phillip and Doug Kalitta are right on the back end of his car trying to to take a position away. There's Coletta. You see him trying to get to the inside, but for the moment, Brian Gerster holds off the challenge. Yeah, Phillips trying to get down there, trying to get that position. Gerster's running pretty quick. Meanwhile, Steele's pulled out into an eight or ninth car length lead over Gerster. As Gerster seems to be just a little bit. Oh, look at that, man. He stuck that thing down in under him, couldn't quite get by him, and slid up, just barely missed him. Now then, going into the next corner, Looks like he's going to make it by this time. Yes, he did. Doug Coletta, or rather, uh, Chet Phillip has taken second position from Gerster. Now here is Coletta trying to challenge Gerster for the third position. Yeah, Coletta now has to work on him. You know, now they're getting into lap traffic, too, and that's going to be a big problem for everybody as uh, J.J. Yaley and Mike Blake up there, the blue car and the orange car, respectively, and they're, oh, look at this. Coletta went on the outside of Blake and on the inside of Yaley. Meanwhile, he blew by Gerster. What a move by Coletta. And so Doug Coletta now is in third position. Dave Steele is the leader. Chet Phillip is catching him. Coletta is running in third. Gerster is in fourth position. And I'll tell you what, Chet Phillip, we're going to have to keep an eye on him as we ride on board with Gerster because Chet Phillip may make a race out of this before it's over. Yeah, we're taking a look back there. That's Brian Tyler. That's uh, battling back there in the back. I'll tell you what, they really have, there's battles all over the racetrack, really. Yeah, there is Dave Steele. He has won twice this year in sprint car competition. Both of them have been on the pavement at Indianapolis Raceway Park. There he puts a lap on Derek Davidson. But look now, there's Chet Phillip, and Phillip is closing in quickly. Yeah, he certainly is. He's uh, really catching him, and right behind him, of course, is uh, Coletta. He's coming up pretty quick, too. So this could be a three-car race. Oh, look at this. Whoa. Joey Kerr tried to move down out of the way, moved right in the path of Steele. He saw the layover flag. He tried to get down out of the way, and Steele was already down there. That cost Steele some uh, valuable time and gave Chet Phillip a, a chance to catch up. Once you get out of that throttle and even on the brake, despite the fact that you're only off the throttle or on the brake for a very, very short time, it, it reduces your momentum and allows the guy behind you to catch up. Steele is beginning to pull away once again from Chet Phillip. There is Doug Coletta as he works on Tim Cox. Well, I tell you what, a lot of dust down there. Somebody got really, really low down there in that corner, evidently threw up all sorts of dust. But you're right, Steele, all of a sudden, once he got around that traffic, he, uh, he started to pull away from Chet Phillip. I'm wondering if that constant push that he's talked about coming up late in the race is not affecting him right now. There is Dave Steele continuing to lap cars. And there is Tyler. Yeah, he's now caught up with Brian Gerster. And he's, so he's trying to make a move on Gerster. Gerster's got Kerr in front of him at lap traffic. And uh, Tyler 
right now given uh, Gerster all he wants as Gerster seems to have uh, also had a little bit of tire trouble. Gerster trying to make his car to the outside. Now he comes to the low side of Brian Gerster as they go down the front straightaway. Gerster though, hello in position and we got a problem. That looked like uh, that's that's Chet Phillip. Chet Phillip and that was uh, Coletta who went over the back end of him and caused him to spin out. Wow, that could have been very, very serious. But as it turns out, Chet Phillip, his car is headed the wrong direction and it uh, means that he is not in second place anymore. But man, that could have been very serious. Yeah, that uh, turned out a whole lot better than most things like that do at this particular racetrack. That's the fastest part of the race course down at the end at the back of uh, the corner. Let's see, as they're coming off of turn two, they're heading down the back straightaway. Kalita gets a run, whoa! Oh, it was if, Yeah, it was not Phillip, Kalita's yeah. fault. Uh, Philip just got sideways. Kalita did a great job just to keep from running right over him and knocking both of them out. And, uh, you know, Phillip's just sliding around there, just flies up in front of everybody in the racetrack. Let's just take another look, see if we can figure out exactly. Oh, he just got, the back end just got loose. He just lost it like we've seen so many other guys do. Just so happens that Kalita was trying to make a move on the inside, and when he did that sideways slide right in front of him, Kalita had no place to go. He did a great job just to keep that car on all four wheels. Well, it looks like that Kalita's car is okay, although he made pretty good contact with Chet Phillip. Phillip takes the worst end of the deal. We are 19 laps into the race, 11 to go here at Winchester. Dave Steele still leads. We'll be right back. ESPN 2's Thunder from Winchester, Indiana is being brought to you this evening by Radio Shack. You've got questions, we've got answers. And by Pennzoil, formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Onboard cameras are courtesy of CarQuest. We appreciate their cooperation in uh, giving us the onboard cameras here this afternoon. You can dial 1-800-492-PART for the CarQuest Auto Parts dealer near you. Dave uh, is with Chet Phillip. Chet's car's just been pushed back in. When one turns that quick, I got to think something broke. What broke? Yeah, we snapped the axle off. Uh, the, the live axle just broke in two. A wild ride. Uh, Kalita about ran over your tent, didn't he? I don't know what was going on. I was just, I knew I was backing up awful fast, and then it turned, and I thought, well, I don't want to. I was just trying to guide it off the wall. Yeah. You're okay. Oh, yeah. No damage here other than to the car. Kalita did a heck of a job of saving that 22. There went my pick. We're ready to restart. Here they come off the fourth corner. There is one lap car between first and second. That would be Johnny Heidenreich. Dave Steele leads him down. The green flag is out. We've got 11 more laps to go. That is Kalina there, the third car on the right. Now he goes to the inside of Heidenreich, and there are now no cars between him and Dave Steele. Kalina sets sail for the leader. Well, it'll be interesting to see. He's been the fastest car here all night, it seems, but uh, Steele has been very, very tough uh, most of this race. And I don't know that he can gather him in, and if he can't gather him in, whether well, he can get around him. Ooh, you can see right there, Tyler got a little bit high, and when he did, Brad Armstrong went right on around him. He certainly did. Now the interval, only a few car lengths, and as we see Heidenreich here with Armstrong. Now, Brad Armstrong's done a real nice job here tonight. Dave. We haven't said a whole lot about him. He started back in about seventh or eighth spot, and he's come through the field pretty nicely. Eight laps to go. There is the first and second place runners as Kalita comes up. As Larry said, catching him is one thing, but going around him is another. He's caught Dave Steele, but now the question is, can he get around him in the remaining lap? Steele has looked awfully good in this race, but Kalita is very, very fast. You know, this is almost exactly the same situation we had earlier. He's faster than Steele right through the middle of the corner, but Steele is getting off of the corner a little bit better. Now that Kalita's trying different things, he's trying to run the racetrack a little different, trying to find a weakness in the way that Steele's driving the racetrack so that he can get around him. So far, he hasn't found that weakness. He's a little bit quicker through the middle, but it looks like coming off, he's got a little bit of a push. And the longer they run, the 
better steel seems to go and the slower Coletta is. He's not, he's really going backwards over the last couple of laps now. In the three previous races for the sprint cars here at Winchester, Dave Steele has finished 14th, third, and third again. He's in the lead right now as we have just a few more laps to go and the interval is growing, Larry. Dave yep. Steele is pulling away. That's right, Coletta has picked up a very bad push. Watch him coming off the corner. See the wheels turn hard left and that thing's just still going up the racetrack. He's picked up a very, very bad push coming off the corners and it's just going to prevent him. See, every time coming off the corner, he drifts way up the racetrack. That's going to prevent him uh, winning this race, I think. Less than two laps to go. There's Dave Steele moving to the inside of Derek Davidson, putting another lap on him. This time around, he'll get the white flag. We'll have one more lap to go in this 30-lap feature at Winchester. There it is. One more circuit around this half-mile high-banked racetrack. Dave Steele from Tampa, Florida goes down the back stretch. A half a lap to go now. Yeah, he's, he's done a nice job. He, read, he led this race the whole way, but believe me, it wasn't easy. He had a lot of challenges from everybody and their brother, including Philip and uh, Coletta, and he held them off. And the longer the green flag stayed out, it seemed like the better his race car got. That's his third feature win for 1997, two at Indianapolis Raceway Park, and he comes away the winner here tonight on the high banks of Winchester. We'll be back to talk with him in just a moment. Steel wins on Thunder. Back in a moment. Hey, the aristocrat racing team are having a party and they got a lot to celebrate and this young man right here is the reason why dave Steele. that was just a heck of a run congratulations i'll tell you what i couldn't do it without uh, johnny vance my car owner he's a super guy and uh bob east comes out to the races and help us out and uh i just saw it to those guys what the guy behind the wheel had a little to do with it though huh johnny he did a really great job didn't he <laughs> he's a gasser you gave him a pretty good piece of equipment what about the restart? No, you had uh, Coletta right on your bumper when the thing restarted, and for the first few laps, looked like you might have a challenge for it, then you pulled away from it. Right. Um, well, under the yellow, I looked up at the scoreboard, and I saw uh, 22 was right behind me, and I got I got a little bit worried, but, you know, the car the car was working good, and I was just trying to uh, hold my own line and not not mess up, and I knew it'd, it'd be, even if he was a little bit quicker, I knew it'd be tough for him to get by me, so uh, we just kind of stuck her on the bottom and finished the race. You came in fifth in the points. You should gain a little ground in terms of the championship. Is that a big issue for you when you're primarily focusing on the pavement? Well, I mean, we'd like to do focus on the dirt and pavement, but it just so happens uh, we just kind of take one race at a time and try to win every race. And uh, however the points fall, that's uh, just how it'll go. We'll see you at IRP, though, before this year's out, huh? Uh, yeah. All right, man. $2,000 from wins. He's got wins on the front of the car. It's a big celebration here tonight for Dave Steele, the race winner. Let's go back up topside. And take a look at the final results here this evening. Dave Steele, an outstanding job. Kalita was second, then Gerster, Brad Armstrong. Nice run for him, and Brian Tyler was fifth. Taking a look at six through ten, it's Pat Abold, Kevin Thomas, Tim Cox, Heidenreich, and Joey Kerr. Yeah, those guys uh, did a nice job. I'll tell you what, this is such a tough racetrack. A guy that does, uh, you know, even runs in the top 10 at a place like this, a guy like Kevin Thomas, who has not run a lot of pavement, did a great job. And I think you're right, Brad Armstrong, I think that's the best race I've ever seen him run. And there is Brian Gerster's car. He finishes in third position. We understand that uh, Thomas now leads Tyler by 37 points in the battle for the championship in the USAC Stoops Freightliner Sprint Car Series. And we're headed next to Indianapolis Raceway Park in two weeks. Again, we'll see the same sprint cars on the paved track, but it's a little different than this. Well, it's a whole lot different than this, but it's a fast flatter pavement racetrack than this and it'll be interesting to see i think we'll have a few more cars there and uh, a very very tough racetrack to run dave that's it from up top here i just want to say that i thought the onboard video guys did a great job tonight i love those pictures of gerster's eyes and all that action behind him we tip our hat to them for a great job well winchester has lived up to its billing the community sponsored the race tonight at its namesake speedway and it proved to be a good one and it just kicks off the holiday weekend tomorrow we've got qualifying for the winston cup cars down daytona three o'clock eastern time 12 o'clock on the left coast be sure and tune in for that see if jeff gordon can continue his incredible role as a thunder graduate the race is saturday morning 11 o'clock eastern time jenkins and i and all the rest of us will all be there thunder comes back july 16th that's two weeks for the usac stoops freightliner sprint cars from indianapolis raceway park i want to see you there congratulations to dave Steele and the aristocrat team for a great victory here tonight for autumn's the thunder i'm dave the spain see you in two weeks